Hello, everyone. This is Edward Tamijian. I'm one of the six board of directors of Internet Infidels, and I have a library piece on the origin of evil, and I'm on their kiosk editorial review committee as well. And today I'm going to be interviewing Justin Yakima. And uh, to give an introduction for this gentleman, he has submitted a paper to Internet Infidels called A Critique of the Free Will Defense, a comprehensive look at Alvin Plantiga's solution to the problem of evil. And it was initially published by the University of New Hampshire. And uh, did you want to add to that introduction, Justin? No, I think that is perfectly great. Um, yep, I just I wrote this paper. I was getting my undergrad in philosophy at UNH. Great time. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So for our first question, uh, I guess tell us all about uh, your paper and, you know, the specific critiques you have of Alvin Plantiga's free will defense and what motivated you to write it and stuff. So the motivation to write this paper came kind of in twofold. When you ask the classical problem of evil question, you you get these two generic responses. You get a not free will, free will. That's 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 what it is, yeah. free will. And it's just kind of so like a like a blase answer, like, oh, yeah. they've already solved it in their head. So why bother taking their time? And I've, I've always found that quite interesting because we've been thinking about this problem for centuries, but you just happen to to know the answer is just free will so you can dismiss the problem out of hand. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the second reason I've always found is the, the people who are religious, even the religious people in my life, um, they always find that God needs to be something that is, quote, worthy of worship. Mm -hmm. um, and I have always found this type of problem to question that kind of um, understanding of him. Could you is, is a God worthy of worship one that isn't all knowing, isn't all powerful or isn't all good? Which uh, trait could you sacrifice <laughs> so your God is worthy of worship? Mm -hmm. um, so I've always found those two things to that's what drove me to to write this paper kind of or at least to write the paper to say that I don't believe this gentleman has solved the problem quite like he thought. Gotcha. All right. Sounds good. And uh, just to let everyone know, I already read the paper, read it, read it a while back. It was actually pretty good. So um, if you all um, tuning in want to read his paper, just look up Justin Yukema, University of New Hampshire, and you'll see um, the paper online. I just uh, read it again a little bit, so you can easily find it online, guys. All righty, so for our second question, uh, tell us about your uh, other paper you wrote a while back called Psychology, <laughs> Science or Not? <laughs> so essentially, this was a, a much shorter paper, one and a half pages compared to the 43. It, yeah, was yeah, not a, yeah. it was not a deep dive or a research, but I essentially just try to make the assumption that I, I don't, this this critique could be incorrect, but I don't necessarily think science and math are the same thing. And so what I did is I said psychology isn't necessarily a science. It's more of a statistics. Uh -huh. um, the premise is essentially based on the individual. And it's based, I feel, on the scientific method where if you take an experiment, you can never duplicate those results uh -huh. because you always have one individual person. And since that one person can never be duplicated, you can't replicate an experiment in the sense and call psychology a science mm -hmm. just because you can never take. That. And so what I did is you can say, well, yeah, you know, a majority of the people who are raised in abusive relationships will abuse others and. But I said, yeah, that's probably true. And I agree with you. But the probably leads me to, nah, this seems much, much more like a statistic than it does a science. Mm -hmm. Simply because, and I'm not saying it's not scientific, but no, you, you can't sell me that it's a science until you can duplicate the result. Gotcha. And, and, and arrive at the same conclusion. Mm hmm. No, I understand there are going to be huge pushback against that, but, you know, it was just, it was just, it was just an observation that I'm making, uh -huh. and I think I would still stick by it. Awesome. Sounds good. <laughs> All righty. And then, um, so uh, what are you doing nowadays? Like, what do you do for worker stuff? <laughs> so I actually teach math, and I teach uh, special education. I started teaching it in New Hampshire, and now oh, nice. I teach it in Dayton, uh, Dayton, Ohio. Um so yeah, that's what um, that's what I did after I graduated from UNH. I went and got my master's, and here I am. Never thought I would be. Well, I can't I can't say that's not true. Actually, 
<laughs> when I first went to UNH, I was actually a math education major and a friend told me he's like, oh, you actually have to come to this class. You'll like this professor. Uh, you know, I, forget, I don't remember the name of the class, but obviously I remember the professor who's passed away now. But he's like, no, you'll like this. You know, come on, you'll do it. And um, I went to this philosophy class and I was like, oh, my God, this is so much better than what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I, I like this and it's it's so much better. I think that's actually like the draw to philosophy for me is I I like to I like to look at things that I do not understand and mm-hmm. I think that that's something that even the the you know this problem and the paper and like I said before you know what god would be worthy of your worship type deal this is all stuff I don't understand how other people try to solve it so I would like to know how people try to solve it mm-hmm. awesome sounds good so you graduated from the university of new hampshire now you're teaching at it no, 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 I teach in Dayton, Ohio right now, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, oh, gotcha, yeah. okay, okay, That that's cool, that's cool, yeah, math was, you know, I never got math, but, like, I know some people that, like, you know, I think it's, like, a thing that's, like, you have to just, like, be born with it, you know, and just, because it's just, like, you know, it, I was, um, at UIW, I had to take some preliminary math courses, and our teacher was like, she assured us, she was like, you know, it's not going to be anything uh, more than like a freshman high school level math or whatever. And it was, it was freaking hard. Yeah. Like, and, and, like, and, and you know, I think part of it is like the math they're teaching kids nowadays is harder than the math they taught, like say, like fifteen years ago. Because I remember, um, or someone in my class, and he was actually um, someone who had a high ranking position in the. Um, the Food and Drug Administration, and um, he was saying, like, you know, I took, the last time I took math was in the 80s, and, like, it was, it wasn't nearly as hard as, like, the, you know, like, the math, you know, that we had to study in class and stuff, so, like, I guess it was kind of that way with me, like, the, like, the math I took, like, in the 90s and early 2000s was just, like, like, you know, poppycock compared to, like, what we have now, that's just the way they do things, and it's, like, the same thing with music, too, like, I remember taking, like, um, uh, like a music preliminary course I had to pass in order to like graduate or whatever. It's like, it's like piano proficiency or whatever. Uh-huh. And it was like pretty easy when I took it, but then I had to retake it like a couple of years later. Cause I didn't like pass all the things. And it was, mm-hmm. I think it was like three years later. And like, there was like all this extra stuff you had, you had to do like modulations and things. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> you know, yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> it, it, I mean, that's just how they do it. You know, as time goes by, you know, they just make everything harder for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, because I can say because I teach, the the principle behind special education, I suppose, is to build on those remedial skills that you would need to in order to be on level with your peers. So you know when you're doing something with say like parabolas, you know I don't need to understand parabolas, but whatever yeah. stopping them, do they have a problem with addition, subtraction, negative or positive number, something like that? That's where I step in and I say okay. If this is what's stopping you from understanding what your peers are learning, let's try to fill in those gaps. So thankfully, in the special ed field, I don't need to, my knowledge does not need to be like widespread. I don't need Uh to know like trig and stuff like that. I just need to work and help the kids with remedial skills. Yeah, I think it's like extra pressuring on like teachers in high school because like you have to teach them everything for the, you know, the SAT and stuff. You know, because, like, they'll, yeah, they'll, especially, like, the SAT nowadays, I'm sure they've made that even harder. So, it's, like, you got to cover everything, but, oh, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, that was a pretty good interview. Um, I guess to close off, uh, did you want to have any, you know, final thoughts? And then after that, I'll let you, um, you can tell people how to reach you and stuff. Yeah, so, um I still wish perhaps that the teaching, teaching math and special ed has unfortunately consumed a lot of my time because, I mean, you must write IEPs on the weekend and I still have Um, classrooms I have to teach. Unfortunately, it's taken a lot of my time. And what what I mean by that is it's a good thing because I do and I love what I do, but it has moved me away from philosophy and you don't get to um, mix them both every now and then you can you can have an educated talk with with students about some like really heavy issues sometimes Mm -hmm. um a great example is you know we have kids who or i have kids right we're doing consumer math we're understanding a paycheck and we're understanding how people get paid and what do you do if you get paid weekly bi-weekly monthly yearly you know stuff like that the students are smart enough to know well 
why are we paying taxes? Because we're in the black neighborhood and we don't have as good of things as a white neighborhood. So why are we paying taxes when none of our stuff gets taken care of? And I'm just like, wow, that's a really good question. And I'm really glad that you asked that. And that's something we can actually talk about, you know, and have a real discussion. That discussion is sometimes more real than the actual lesson is that I have planned for the day. So those kind of like aha or breakthrough moments for the kids are really rewarding because, you know, that means you like, you know, they're thinking not necessarily about taxes and percents coming out of your paycheck, but they're thinking big picture. And that's what they're going to need when they get out of, you know, the high school. Yeah, gotcha. All righty. And then uh, did you have any do you have any blogs or anything, Facebook or anything? I don't. But me and a friend want to. And I'm hoping talking to you and getting this will inspire Man, I just need more time. I just, you know, or I swear we need to go to like a four day school week and like a three day weekend and I could get so much more done, I swear. Yeah. That, oh, well. Oh, oh, well, but it looks like you're doing good, dude. And and congratulations for, you know, um, you know, your paper and stuff. I'm sure a lot of people have read it. Um, I mean, it's still online on like the top search results. Um, if you look up like Alvin Plantiga's free will defense, I just looked, I think that's how I came across your paper. I was just like, uh, Alvin, Plant, I was looking up like a, a criticism of Plantiga's free will defense. I think that's what I put in. Cause I read, I wrote my paper and it kind of got in it. I mean, and after it got published, it kind of had to do with like a little bit about, as you know, it kind of has to do with the libertarian free will defense and problems with that. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. So I, I wanted I want to see like other people's opinions and like in the top five search results, I saw your paper and then I clicked on that. So. You know, you're, you're you're high up there. You're on, you're you're still on the ch- hot on the chart. <laughs> well, it's cra- it's crazy. UNH their um their repository sends me an email about once a month saying how many downloads I get, oh, and I cool. swear it's something like in the high hundreds every month for like I don't know thirteen thousand total downloads. I don't know who the hell all these people are. Or if it's just like the system needs some sort of like backup thing where it's constantly downloading to like make sure if there's a failure, it like has everything. I don't know if it's <laughs> downloading it. I, I mean, I'm if those are actual all real people and not like bots, I'm super happy for them. <laughs> I hope they learn something. They can ask me if they want. I have made edits to the paper that's online. Uh-huh. Uh, I will say they're not real content edits. They're just more, well, I'm like, almost 10 years older than I was when I wrote the paper and I've been through now like a master's program so I felt my writing could be greatly improved so there's no content it's just like an organization and some grammatical choices Mm -hmm. that I fixed um, and that will be submitted quite soon awesome sounds good all righty well thanks a lot Justin for the interview and then in a couple of minutes I'll just download it and I'll give you a link and you can put it on Facebook Share it around. I'll post this on, uh, since I'm the Newswire editor for Internet Infidels, too, I'll put it on our Twitter, so you'll cool. get some popularity. Awesome. Well, I do appreciate that. Anyone can reach me. Um, it's just my first name, underscore, of my first name, J-U-S-C-I-N, Justin, underscore my last name, which is Y-K-E-M-A, and yes, I still use Yahoo. So it's Justin, <laughs> underscore, Y-K-E-M-A, at Yahoo.com. Anyone can reach me. I will respond. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Thanks a lot, Justin. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Yep.